Okay, this is my review for my uh, Crossman Quest 500X. I'm going to emphasize the 500 part. This is not the American 1000 feet per second version. This is a Canadian version that's been tuned down to 500 feet per second. Well, actually 495 feet per second, but uh, which is it's still a great gun. It's accurate, it's easy to use, uh, has a nice stock on it, fully adjustable front or uh, rear sight, fiber optic front and rear sight. Uh, I mounted, I don't use the open sights. This gun did come with a scope, not this one, uh, but the scope that came with is really just a piece of junk. It doesn't take the vibration well at all. And I'll get to the characteristics of this gun firing in a minute. This scope I have on here is, is, isn't really a scope, it's a red dot sight, the center point red dot sight. The great sight, I recommend it. I haven't done a review on it yet, but I probably will eventually. Uh, it's fully adjustable, it has red or green dot in it. You can adjust the brightness, it comes with flip open lenses. Uh, it, it does come with mounts, but it comes with the weaver mount and the rails on this gun are 3 8 dovetail, so I had to buy some 30 millimeter high mounts for it. You can, there's lots of places in Canada for uh, Canadian sites you can buy those mounts, so it's not hard to find them or anything. Uh, anyway, about the characteristics, when you fire this gun, this gun kicks harder than any other spring gun in my collection. And uh, because of that, you have to be more careful what kind of scope you put on it. Make sure it's one that can take the vibration of it or else you'll have to be constantly adjusting your scope and that's really annoying to have to do. Uh, which I really wonder if this gun is truly below 500 feet per second because it feels a little bit more powerful. Uh, something I've noticed when I first got it is the lubricant in the barrel, in the chamber seems to burn up pretty fast. So what I do is I put a couple drops of uh, air tool oil into the chamber and just a couple drops every five, every 250 shots or so and it seems to work really well. Uh, I do have a target I'll show you that this gun, I shot with this gun. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. This is the target here. This grouping here was shot in the sitting position at 15 yards, it's five shots and this group here was shot in the standing position at the same range so this is obviously a pretty decently accurate gun uh, something that aids a great deal in accuracy is the trigger on this gun it's very, it's quite smooth and it's not too heavy, it's not too light, for me it's just right uh, the safety in here is also housed within the trigger guard it's not automatic like all my other spring guns, which is not the best, but you should still be in the habit of resetting your safety manually anyway, like I do with my other guns, so it's not a big deal for me. But uh, the finish on the steel of this gun is is very deep. It's nice. Uh, I haven't had any problems with rusting it. It's starting to get into the humid summer months in New Brunswick. And uh, in the summer months, in New Brunswick, humidity is, a, is quite bad. Like my other guns, I have to put a coat of oil on them every other day, or else they'll rust a little bit. Uh, the stock on here, I'm pretty sure it's beech. I don't think it's walnut, but it is a pretty nice stock. Uh, I I like the color of it personally. I don't know if some of you may prefer darker stock, but uh, I think this is a very nice stock. Um, this gun probably wouldn't be the best gun for a beginner because it's a spring gun. The best guns for beginners are pump action, single stroke pneumatic, uh, CO2, and guns like that because spring guns take a lot more technique to learn to shoot them. And I did a video on that on some of that technique actually. You might want to check out uh, how to grip a springer. Uh, this gun has a rubber recoil pad on it which if you watch my video of how to grip a springer you won't be using very much. Um, it, uh, this gun feels very solid. It's all steel and wood except for the sights and the, and the trigger blade itself is plastic and so is the safety lever and the trigger guard. But other than that, this is 100% steel and wood. Uh, this gun I would recommend to anyone who is looking for a gun for small game hunting at relatively close ranges or medium ranges. Uh, I haven't had an opportunity to test this gun beyond 15 yards, but as you saw on that target I showed you, this gun is very accurate at 15 yards. Uh, 
the, the, tar the shots on that target were a little bit high, but uh, all you needed was just the scope for that. Um, this is a great gun for the money. It cost me about 150 bucks, and for any of you guys in the states, 150 bucks for an air gun in, for a spring gun in Canada is pretty much average, because the company the stores that import them have to pay a brokerage fee and then that brings the price way up for them so they have to bring the price up for us. I realize in the States you guys can probably get this gun considerably cheaper but in Canada you can't. So don't be commenting on my videos saying you got ripped off and then I'm that I'm misinforming anyone because I'm not. This is honestly what I paid for it. I think it was well worth it. But uh... And I have the another gun that I'm going to be doing a review for in the next few days, my QB78, the CO2 powered gun. Uh, I'll try to get that out in the next couple days. It's also a very good gun, very accurate. Uh, it's bolt action, CO2 powered. Uh, and it's a great gun too. But this gun here, in closing, uh, if you're looking for a gun for plinking in your backyard or plinking in the basement, this is a great choice. If you're looking for a gun for small game hunting, this is also a good choice. Um, and for serious, serious target shooters, you might want to go with a more expensive gun. But you can still shoot some pretty good groups of this gun, so you might be pleased with just this. But uh, I'd recommend this gun to anyone looking for a good spring gun in Canada.